just a complete waste of my time. It seems like anybody that tries to speak up is just ignored or thrown out. And when I come down here, when I want to, I want to squeal, hey, because that's what people are. And last time I was thrown out, I was trying to make a point. You probably have. You're being disrupted. That's why you're thrown out. But it's my right. Well, how was I being disrupted? Right to be disrupted? I wasn't disrupted. Hold on. Can I ask, who was I disrupting then? Ladies and gentlemen, if I want to squeal like a pig to make a point, would you be upset? Yes. 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 All right, well, then I won't. But I <laughs> You were looking for something for me, apparently. <laughs> okay. But here's the, here's the issue. The reason I do that, it's all, it's all true. Like these poor people here. When I said to them they want parking, you know how they're going to get that parking? Have him a $10,000 election party. When he gets to win that he's not in charge, you wait to see what will happen. You just won't do nothing for these people. Because that's how this works here. You have to pay off the mayor. And what I try to bring up a point about you, Bill, $94 a day to eat, you probably have to be one of the most well-fed councilmen in the United States. And that's piggism, as far as I'm concerned. And when I'm making a point about you, Mr. Brown, taking these $200 payouts, and you, did you cancel your health insurance yet? $28,000 a year? And you just wonder why this city is broke? And even you, Mrs. Lebel, you come in here with a fresh face, and what do you do? You stoop down in the gutter to take $200 a month payout. And it's ridiculous. And that's how I feel about it. And that's why I, why I bring the issue up. Now, another thing I like to bring up. When, this, when the administration is talking, for these people to sit down there, you should stand up and address the people that are talking. There used to be a podium here that should be put back. And I think it's ignorant of you people to sit there and not stand up and talk when people are addressing you. Now I'd like to talk, talk a little bit about the parkade. I'm, well, why is this administration hiding from the council and everybody else, all the citizens? I understand the bid came in with $7 million. This is a scam from the start. Pay, pay that. Uh, J.J. Murphy's brother's law firm, a hundred some thousand dollars, when we could have just went for five thousand dollars from Desmond and got the figure. And do it for free. Right. No talking from behind the rail. Right. Chris, get him out. <laughs> <laughs> Ms. McCormick, I want you, and since Mr. George seems to be the only one any, with any guts here to do anything about this towing contract, I want you to address a couple issues, and I want an answer. I want you, Mr. George, and I want you, Mr. McCormick, because you're the one who stood here months ago saying, oh, he, he, it's not the city that pays, yeah, I pays the city $50,000 a year. Well, I brought the proof in, and I just seen proof of another $200 tote today. It's the people in the insurance companies that, that are getting robbed by what this administration is doing. But what I want you to do, I want you to do a little bit of investigation. I want you, because you're the city administrator, I want you to haul Rock Captain Robert Hughes over here, and I want you to sit down and find out what his business arrangement was with, more, with LAG Towing, where he was getting cars on consignment and selling them. And that, as far as I'm concerned, is a conflict of interest. It's bad enough the chief of police and secretary's husband ran a place for six and a half years. That's bad enough. And the chief to sit over there, he should resign. As far as I'm concerned, he's nothing more than a thief like the mayor for allowing this to go on. And I want you to work on two things for you, Mr. George. I want you to find out who authorized the liquor to be poured into that police station so those cops could take liquor. And it was put in, I, what I'm told, right across the street, right across the hallway from Chief DeSoy's office, a second coming of Daniel Boone. I want you to find out who brought that liquor in. Who authorized that liquor to be given to these police officers? And I want you to do something about it. And Mr. George, I want you to work with them and find out who allowed this bribery to go on. Because that's what it is. And I do get loud, and I do get upset, and I squeal at the pig because I'm so frustrated. I think these poor people, they want parking. They're not going to get that parking unless they have a block party and give Layton about $20,000. 30 seconds. Mr. George, I'm asking you to have some guts and some backbone, and I'm having a hard time. I'm still waiting for my receipts. They're, they're crossing all the names out. But I want you to work with this administration. I want you to find out how Captain Hughes could have been in business for all those years with LAG, and I want to find out who poured the liquor into the police station, because as far as I'm concerned, that bribery, given our police officers, booze, and the ones who took it had to be stupid and out of their minds. 
And I'm asking you to find out for me, and I'm asking you to work with him and get up and do something about it, Marie. Because somebody authorized booze to be taken in and given to our police officers, and I'm telling you, it's bribery. And if they want to start pulling me over tomorrow and doing what they want, they could. Most likely when they pull me over, I was, I've already called call a criminal, like I did a couple, two weeks ago. Hey, thank you, Mr. Kedlowski. <laughs>